So what is intersectional feminism and why is it important? Well, we've been talking about women and power um, against the backdrop of women's political participation. And there's so much excitement now um, that we have to really think about what do we know about women and political participation um, historically? What are some of the lessons that we might learn from it? Well, let's think a minute about the struggle for women's political power right here in the United States. Um, in about 15, 20 years, we're going to celebrate the centennial of women's right to vote. And knowing as I do how we in America like to celebrate things like anything that happened here was the greatest thing that ever happened in the world, <laughs> I can imagine how excited everybody's gonna be. But here's the question. When do I, as an African American woman, get to celebrate my entry into the political community? In reality, I've got to wait another 40 years to celebrate because the situation was that giving blacks to vote did not empower blacks who were women. And giving women the right to vote did not empower women who were black. So this, quite simply, is what I call structural intersectionality, the collision of two overlapping dynamics of oppression. Patriarchy reared its head during the debate over the 15th Amendment. It was the Negro's hour, they said, right? So the Negro's hour apparently meant that it was not Negro women's hour, it was Negro men's hour. Well, what happened when the women's hour came to vote some 30 years later? By that time, blacks had been so thoroughly disenfranchised that black women won nothing when women won the right to vote. Now, you're not gonna read this story in our history books, and it certainly isn't part of our political culture. We celebrate women's enfranchisement and the women who led the struggle as though it's an unabashed victory for women. The fact that a whole lot of women were left at the station falls from our consciousness, as does the racial strategy that the suffragettes followed to win the vote for women. In fact, one of the main arguments for women's suffrage was that it would help shore up white supremacy. Women, it was argued, would be the helpmates to maintain the American way of life against lower order citizens and all these immigrants. Adding millions of white women voters to the rolls would ensure that democracy would survive. It was not an accidental argument, nor an isolated one. Now, I don't want this to be a one-sided critique um, because African-American men weren't any better on the question of whether black women should get the right to vote. Uh, his basic sense was that they were better off left disenfranchised with friends like these. Need I say more? So what's the moral of this story? Why is this important? I mean, you might say, come on, um, this is ancient history. What does it have to do with contemporary politics? Well, let's ask a couple questions. What might have happened had enfranchisement truly been universal? if women's power wasn't seen and celebrated as white women's power, if enfranchising the slaves had not been seen as enfranchising the men, if feminism had been seen early on as incorporating all women, black and immigrant, native and Asian, if anti-racism had been seen as incorporating all people of color, men as well as women, what might have happened and where would our culture be now if the fight against patriarchy and the fight against white supremacy had not become alien to each other? And if the women who were subject to both had been centered rather than marginalized in these struggles? We can barely imagine how political life might be different in the here and now.